Good to go. What's going on, everybody? Happy Thursday. What's Baby. happening, man? <laughs> Not much, man. How are you? Man, you know I can't call it. It's Thursday. I came straight home, man. Um, I got a new Blackstone griddle. Mm-hmm. Cook some smash burgers for the wife this mm, right? weekend. Man, <laughs> it's been a good week for me, man. Oh yeah, real good week. But uh, want to let them know why we're here. Hey, so it's been a good week. Hey, I'm glad. I'm glad. New Prince. Well, fall season's upon us, and, like, you know, you got to get it in when you're grubbing down at the home, whipping up some mashed potatoes and stuff like that, getting off of work, and just want to sit back and chill and, you know, play one of the console games or one of the arcades we have at home. So I that's what I'm doing it. this week. I ain't mad at it. We got Liliana. Hey, how you doing? We got Toxin. The gang's all here. We in the building. So today, man, without further ado, man, because Mensa told me I got a time limit. He said he's going to pull my coat. To- Y'all done been in the Baptist church in the black community, and you see people throwing that church thing up. Like, hey, pastor. Hey. And then the pastor say, what? I'm about to wrap it up. One more. Let me get to my last point. So Mensa told me he's going to throw the church finger up on me. But I wanted to tap in. Everybody know I used to be on Old School Gamer Live. Um, but I tell you what, I'm on yes, to some new uh, adventures, so to speak. But I'm still good with Ryan Berger. I still support his mission. As you can see here, man, I got all. Man, I got my magazine back from when I met Billy Mitchell at the Soul Cal mm-hmm. Retro Gaming Expo. And that was the first time I actually got a magazine that was in Los Angeles. And that's when I met Ryan way back when. Uh, he's got a Kickstarter, Mensa. And yes. I don't know yes. about you, but I hadn't really seen too much of a push. Um, mm-hmm. I saw it more recently. Yes. And, and as we know with Kickstarter, that what? If you don't hit the goal, guess what? You don't get the dough. All so, or none. All or nothing, baby. So pull up for me to Kickstarter. I want to talk about that because I want to I want to see who got some deep pockets. I want to see who's going to match me because I'm doing my shit live. So. I want to see who's going to check in. So right now, and I talked to Ryan this week, me, myself, Mensa, Prince, we talked to him. <clears throat> Stephen Haywood, we made, we, we saw where his head is at and seen what the goal is, what the mission is. And from that conversation to now, he's already at 18,000. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, I think we saw it jump about 5,000 after we got off the phones and made our calls. <laughs> hey, look, hey. We like Santa Claus. We making a list and we checking it twice. We tapped right. in with everybody. Haywood, I, I'm, I'm gonna call Haywood. I got the Don on my name. I'm gonna call him Don Corleone because he got <laughs> on the, he got on the this man right here. here. We need some money. So, and sorry, Haywood, if you start getting messages from people, hey, we heard you the money man. We yes, heard you need some money. <laughs> <laughs> but, right now, he's at 187 backers. We got four yes. days to go. He's trying to get 20,000, man. And he's at 20,000, guys. He's at 18, too. So, Liliana, I agree. We got this. Uh, I know Will from JLS Gaming. Shout out to Will. I know he's got some articles coming. Uh, I know his kid has a business that's going to be featured in the magazine. So, I want to see that come to fruition. Let's make sure that we support this. I'll kick it off and I'm gonna go around the horn and, 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 and tell and get everybody else's perspective as to why physical media is important. So I'm gonna tap in and I'm gonna talk about when I used to and I still have my game, not game pro, my Nintendo magazine. Mm. Yes. yes. That was the only way that you got information, fellas. Oh, I'm sorry about this. Oh, that was good. Uh, we hear problem. we hear Ryan uh yap about <laughs> yeah that that did that, that I apologize. So the only way you could get tips, tricks, information if you wanted to have the competitive edge, guess what you needed? You needed that Nintendo Power magazine because you could have oh, been yes. like me. I was broke, <laughs> and I would get on the bus and people talking about. Hey man, the wh- magic whistle and, and the, the warp whistle in yep. yep. three. If you didn't see the wizard, which I saw the wizard, so I knew about it. But if you didn't see the wizard, and if you didn't have Nintendo power, guess what? You in the dust, you in the dark. You got people talking about shit you ain't even seen. That's so true. that was the 
key to having that magazine. And it ain't nothing like going use the bathroom. Sorry about being graphic. And having that magazine rack. Yep. In my house, fellas, we had a, a coffee table. And you know what was on that coffee table? We had Jet Magazine. We had Ebony Magazine. And my mama had Essence Magazine. And it was nothing like young Creole picking up that Jet Magazine. And what I used to do, fellas, I would turn to the beauty of the week and say, Page number 43, the Jet Magazine. <laughs> Game of Fish brought up Electronic Gaming Monthly. And what magazine had a free disc that came with it that was playstation magazine oh, playstation underground man yeah. PlayStation underground, man a bunch of them in the garage what nothing like getting the physical magazine and i ain't just talking i ain't shilling i actually own i'm a i'm a paid subscriber i got mine plastered in my man cave but there's nothing like picking up a physical magazine reading it seeing the glossy cover these pages are glossy it ain't cheap ryan has really put effort in when i was doing his show man the dude would be teaching he would get off work teaching and guess what he'll do he'll try to make the show give his input and then he'll go back to tutoring kids this dude is this is a labor of love guys this ain't him trying to be rich he ain't trying to be bill gates off of this he really is passionate about gaming ryan owns systems so the stuff that he talks about in here ain't nothing he Googling and ain't no Wikipedia and ain't no chat GPT. He actually owns these consoles and he writes about them. So, fellas, man, what to you, what does that mean to have something physical? And then I know, Mensa, you about to chime in on something, but I want to know what what physical means to you. Let us know. I don't know about you, but I, I'm a physical guy. Uh, this I, I'm one of the last holdouts of the digital. <laughs> uh, it, it's something just about it's the, for me being more nostalgic. It's I love to have something that I can call my own. I feel when it's digital, it's it's not mine. It could be taken away at any time. So I, I, I like that. I like holding on to something and having it in my hands. What about you, Prince? Yeah, man, I just love the fact that when you get that fresh copy in your hand from the mail, you just flip through it and then you, that smell. And then what also resonates from it is that, like, when you're looking at any of these developers that, you know, decide to make content for the magazine, they get to be relevant to the community, the gaming community, and, you know, share their, their wealth of what's coming out into the gaming world. You get all a plethora of information, you know, about new game titles um, and more interest that is, be, is that's going to come to what whatever system like at games, Nintendo's, Epics or whatever. So it's like, you know, that's the real great value of having that magazine in your hand other than, you know, if you could get the digital copy. Yes. I'm going to tell you one thing, guys, that uh, I hadn't mentioned. Uh, one of the things that I like about Old School Gamer Magazine is the fact that a lot of these old and Prince touched on something key here. A lot of these old developers and a lot of these older game designers, they getting featured. They've been in obscurity. Hate to be, I don't want to be mean, but who knew that they would ever talk to a Tim Kitzrow? I mean, I got a chance to interview him uh, before and the dude, man, just to hear him say, he's on fire. That's everybody's childhood, man. Yeah. So who would have thought that we would ever know who that guy is? I remember as a kid saying, well, who the hell is this person saying he's on for? Like, I always wondered that. Who is right. who are these voice actors? Iconic. Iconic. And these folks are getting a new life because of the magazine. Like yeah. I said, they're getting featured. Paul Nehemiah. Uh, all these folks are getting new features. They're getting gigs now. They're yeah. going to these uh, conventions. Um, and I and you'll see Ryan and them. I mean, they got they be at the conventions with referee jerseys on that have old school gamer on there. And a lot of those folks is like a traveling circuit, like you guys seen with Tech Buzz. These groups of individuals they go to these different cons and shows, and this is just breathing new life. It's a lot of old games, a lot of old devs, a lot of old influencers. Think about Billy Mitchell, Steve Sanders. These guys were celebrities in the 1980s. Now, go figure that. Billy mm -hmm. Mitchell's name still getting mentioned, regardless of how you feel about that guy. 
whether he cheated, whether he used man, I don't give a damn. He got whatever points he got on Donkey Kong. I can't do it. No. With him. So <laughs> well, it is, he did it. I watched him do it. I watched him. So for Billy Mitchell to be a teenager, and I got the original Time magazine. For Billy Mitchell to be a teenager in the 80s, get featured about a damn video game in 1982, three, January 83, I think it was, 82. And for him to still be doing shows and cons and stuff, to me, that's a big deal. And these magazines like this and this group of folks keeps that relevant. So let, let me add and say, I went to a con out in Syracuse, New York, and um just meeting all of these guys in person that have been in the magazine or have not, they're generally nice. They want to acknowledge the gaming public and all of you guys out there. So for you guys to link up, like for, for instance, and shout out to Chris Williams and Renzo, um, the creators of Heavy Metal Titans. They were able to make a relationship and, with Tim Kitzrow and get him on their game. So yeah. like, just imagine all the possibilities just by getting this magazine, you being a fan at home and just subscribing or, you know, supporting the Kickstarter. Yeah, that's a big deal, man. I mean, for Renzo and them to get him in that game, you can't you can't trade that in. No, mm -hmm. that's forever in your game. Yeah. Immortalized. So I like to call it. So, Minister. Yes. My question to you is, uh, yes. let's pull this this Kickstarter up. All right. Talk about what level I'm going to do, and I'm going to challenge. I'm putting out an APB. I'm challenging people. I'm about to see who's going to match me live. So, the level I'm looking at. So, if we scroll down here, so you have a fifteen dollar level. I think uh, if you just want to help, if you see this, is the thing about Kickstarters, this one in particular. The fifteen dollars, if you ain't even got much, you can you can throw fifteen on it. Get you a t-shirt. T-shirts are nice. Oh, yeah. So we got a t-shirt at fifteen. Yeah, you get your uh, one year digital subscription at twenty. You get one year print and digital for fifty. Then you get a lifetime one. That's a ninety five buck deal there. I mean, that's still under a hundred dollars. Digital. And then yeah, this yeah. is the one that got my attention. Yeah, this uh, one's interesting. Yeah. The 160 um, or the 175 because you get, you know, this one's new. You say what? Uh, the 160 uh, is a uh, new. Uh, oh, it's new. You, oh, that's right. That's a new one. Yeah. If, if you uh, pledge 160, you'll get a uh, Anstream uh, subscription yeah. as well. That's uh, cute. That's a that's a big deal, guys. Good. That is good. Because I pay. Hey, Anstream is like clockwork. They charge my American Express every month, taking their money. They're gonna get theirs. So if you gotta get that free and you didn't did the levels, to me that's a win. That's not just look at this. It's a lifetime account. Yeah, I think on I'm on stream archive. Come on. Wow. <laughs> Whoa, what? <laughs> that, that's got, pretty cool. Then you got 175, which gives you a board position. Now this is this is good too, because Ryan puts you in this group, and and then and I'm in the group from last Kickstarter. Mm-hmm. And in that group, you got the Billy Mitchells. You got all these different influencers, I call them. These folks are advisors to the magazine, so you get to get FaceTime and get to chop it up, wow. um, offer suggestions on how to you know, provide better content. You get that option in that group, so that's another good deal. I think the details are on. I realize too that open, yeah. opens you up to networking, and that's cr crazy already. Like, you know, the connections. Why not? Yeah, I agree with Steven. I, I do think that it should be. I don't I think it's too late now, but he should have a joint shirt year sub level. I think that would be good because it's the shirt, you, the 15. But I think Steven, his thought process was if you only had a couple bucks, we still going to give you something. So mm. I think that might be his thought process on the $15 level. But miss of the feature when I, I, I might want to get featured. What, what, what's that? Yeah. So uh, at 450 um you'll get a feature um you get to choose um basically like a celebrity or, or a collector and who says that collector can't be you uh, uh you'll get a one to two page article um feature and then you get basically all the other perks prior perks which was the um getting on the board uh being part of the um 
uh, basically a, a private group to give your input. And they, I believe for the duration of the year or how, however long, you'll always get a um, credits in the magazine of a thank you. So, man, who I'll tell you this. Uh, Fit Six said it's all about physical media print. That is, ha, hey, I'm with you, Six, and I'm gonna tell you what changed my mind. I've, I've got my stack stereo, right? And I'm listening back to my CDs and records, and I'm like, the songs sound way better on this stack stereo than Spotify. And I'm like, you know what? While it's convenient to stream movies and music and digital uh, books, it ain't nothing like having a physical book listening to a physical CD or record or cassette tape or having a Blu-ray or VHS, well, not VHS, but maybe a blue, a physical Blu-ray or a DVD. It'll show better sometimes than the streaming service. So Now, th though we, we're, we're pushing um, physical, uh, th we have the whole point of Ryan's Magazine is also not just to cater to us, but to, mm -hmm. to the new. To the so new. we also do have digital right and as you guys can see you get your this is an example uh this is a september's um issue and you get a high high quality yes yeah, high res for sure and this is a uh you guys get a preview <laughs> sorry ryan but uh this will help uh, <laughs> of uh the magazine yeah i think the, i think the magazine is good man i think there's a lot that he can do with this um and and those in the chat chime in if you ever seen old school gamer magazines in, in person i think it's a lot more that he, i mean he's doing a lot but i mean i see a whole bunch of things that he could he could do with this um you no know, tech bus said torque he'll be there in november y'all tap in show if y'all going to torque tap in jls i think i'm getting charged like 12 bucks a month for answering so um Speaking of JLS, thank you very much. Um, also, guys, we'll be giving a giveaway uh, at the oh, yeah, end of sure. this uh, stream. We'll tell you the hashtag to put in. Uh, it'll be thanks to JLS uh, Gaming. A shout uh, out to JLS. The guy. giveaway will be a 2024 PS5 Madden. Hey, so, and that's Keegan. I don't even have it yet. So. So. Hey, can I can I get Stick in? Around. Tell, <laughs> tell your friends if they want to get PS5 Madden. Because I still don't have Madden. <laughs> so what? So guys, y'all all read the magazine. I'm gonna go around. I'm gonna start, and I'm gonna go around the horn. What do you want to see? Is the question in the future for Old School Gamer Magazine? I'll start off. I would like to see a, a, a revamp website. I want it to be more uh, user friendly. Yeah, it's it's a little busy, you know. Yeah. Um, and, and and Ryan is what I like about Ryan is Ryan is receptive to feedback. You yeah. can, somebody like my father always tell me somebody could always tell you something you don't know that much. I don't care who you are. Yeah. So I respect the fact that Ryan is open to feedback. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to see uh, some some I ain't gonna say modern, but I want to see some. Maybe PlayStation Dreamcast uh, mm -hmm. coverage because I, it's a lot of in television. It's a lot of and don't get me wrong; those are good systems. But I, I would like to see some more modern retro, and I think I can contribute to that. So I, I, want, I think I might throw an article in there. I'm not just going to talk about it; I'll be about it. Oh yeah, I mean um, that that's another thing. You know, ret retro to some folks is just Atari. You know, but you got these younger kids coming around, you know, retro's PlayStation One now. <laughs> hey, PlayStation I was say, hey, it's retro. Good point. Uh, good so point. We gotta keep up. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, while I do like Atari, I own still my twenty six hundred wood grain, but hey, I wanna see some maybe Dreamcast or some other stuff. What about you, Prince? I'd like to see more articles from you know, these new independent de developers. Um, mm. In this new style of gaming, the retro modern uh, video games, we, we'd experienced that on the arcade a little bit when they had uh, Donut Dodo, and that was very yes. successful for that platform. Um, other than that, PlayStation had a number of um, other retro titles, too. Um, I can't name offhand, 
But more developers like that, more independent developers using the machines such as Godot, Unreal, Unity, and stuff like that, I would love to see come to the magazine and popularize their game. Because um, truth to be true, uh, truth unknown to a lot of people is when you go into these stores, these gaming stores like the Nintendo's and the Xbox stores, the PlayStation Network store. Most of these games that get released by these independent developers get buried under all of the uh, AAA titles. Oh, yeah. they don't know about them. So being in this magazine right now and doing an article or having your game on the front page, oh, man, phenomenal. We learn more about your game, and you become more successful, and you and uh, Old School Gamer magazine is, is becoming successful. Would it be about you, Mr. Thanks for that insight, Prince. That's a good one. I hope Ryan, Ryan, we're gonna send you the link if you're not in the chat already. But uh Mensa, what you think? You're gonna have to refresh me. I'm sorry, I was paying attention to the chat. Oh, yeah, I know that's a tough job. So yeah. what, I, what I'm asking is what do you want to see in the future for old school gamer magazine? So I said I want to see more modern retro, like Dreamcast. Yeah, yeah what when I stopped. My my modern or my nostalgia wasn't just Nintendo. It was like as we were saying, um, PlayStation. You know, like I had the PlayStation Underground, uh, whatnot. So I mean, I th I think we can get up there to the Xboxes and the 360s and uh, X <laughs> like I, I don't think there's a limit to no. what we can talk about for the gaming space. Um, I think uh, it's subjective what is retro um but yeah I, I would like to see more modern what i consider modern so i got so i'm gonna uh take a little moment to address the chat here so uh, we got prince, once you're done oh yeah. my bad i ain't see prince, 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 prince. go ahead prince <laughs> thing, i think this is a golden idea for old school gamer live like me later uh -oh. in, in the fashion where messiah was talking about how like in the playstation underground magazine uh, the magazine came with demo disc, right? Right. Why not a QR code from these independent developers, right? And it's like a, a sliding card inside the magazine. Any one of you developers want to make a uh, like a QR code or one of those scratch off card codes like they have for PlayStation, insert into the magazine for like a free demo of your game. Right. So, Are you listening to this shit? <laughs> Say that again, Prince. A, Q, a, a, a QR code. Give these devs, indie devs, an opportunity to get their game out, and mm -hmm. it's just it's excitement. Oh man, what game I'm gonna get this one? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> I was that guy. Like I would, I would go straight to the oh, disc. <laughs> yeah, to the disc, yep. and, and then I would read and take my time with the magazine after I jumped. Because uh, I, if I went to Barnes and Noble or something, I went straight to what's on the disc. I needed to know what they're covering on that disc. So Jack Buzz said he got an idea for an article on collecting the complete NES collection. He knows a guy. Well, I think I know one too. I think that'll be an excellent article. So um, I'm challenging Tech Buzz to a 450 level uh, Kickstarter. I'm challenging P Dubs. So y'all go clip it. Let him know I said it. <laughs> I'm challenging P Dubs. Michael B, go into them super chat pockets. I'm challenging you to 450 so you can get a feature on how to be successful at YouTube because you've been doing it for years. You've been what? Uh, Michael B, 12 years, 10 years, 12 years. So I would like to see an article on how did you, you know, maintain that long? Uh, who else I'm missing? 19K Fox. Uh, Bobby Boo. <laughs> Tap in. I want to see Be how if you uh, make these mm. mods. I want to see how he mod a cabinet. I want to see uh, Becom. I'm challenging you. I want to get you featured. 450. Bobby Vu. Yes, Bobby, man. Canada the, the modern king. king. <laughs> Canada Phil versus Michael B. I'll pay to see that. <laughs> I will pay. You know what, Mr.? We should make that a show, an episode of Off the Cuff. We get Canada Phil in, we get Michael B, and we see who is the best Canadian pinballer. I'm going to say Canada Phil. I'm going to have to put my money on Phil, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say Phil. Legend. Phil, Phil <laughs> know his way around that pinball machine, so I don't know. <laughs> Michael B, oof, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> 
who we got? We got let's address the chat real quick. We got Carl Lowe in the building. What's up, oh, Carl? Yeah. We got two die for a clean like a mother. We got Gamer Fridge. We got Tech Buzz. We got JLS. We got uh Canada Phil, our boy. And I seen Dragon in here. Man, everybody's in here. Shane is in here. What's up, Shane? If you guys don't know, Shane is a good DJ. Him and his brother, they do a musical stream on, on the weekend. You can go rock out, listen to hip hop, rock, uh, yacht rock, whatever you want to hear. They take requests. Prince hey, Malcolm, we need to get you through there. She Line Gaming, what's happening with you? She Line, hey, I need some help with my Hydro Thunder cab. We'll chat. <laughs> good to see everybody out here. Oh, we got we got 4K. Well, damn, well, damn Bobby. <laughs> Bobby said, forget pinball. Well, we'll see when that 4K L. <laughs> we gonna see what Bobby talking in a couple months, Phil. Should we um plug in this um what we got here? Uh yeah, play, like we got play, a message from Ryan yeah. himself. Play this Ryan brand Reese. new. All right, let's see what we got here. Can y'all hear this? Yeah, crank it up. All right. How all we sound it? You gotta go all the way with it. Hi there, I'm Mike. my name is Ryan Berger. I'm with Publish for Gold School Gamer Magazine. This is my day job. I'm a high school computer teacher in Perry, Perry, Iowa. Love my job here and have no aspirations of being here to do the magazine full time, but I'd like to get the magazine going even bigger so we can do even more within the industry. We're currently on our on our Kickstarter. We're just short of the 20k goal. We're really going for 30 or 35k, but we're at 20 right now. Um, we're about to hit that, and I'm excited that we're going to be keeping on going. The 20K funds us printing four issues of the magazine. We usually do six issues a year, but four issues at 20K basically covers our print cost of the basic portion of the magazine. So we'd like to go up to 30K to do six issues like we have for the previous six years. Um, for current subscribers, you can renew via this method, and we'll update stuff in the system. But even more importantly, spread the word to all your friends that are going out there. So let's keep on going. Let's hit those goals. And let's keep Old School Gamer out there documenting the history and celebrating it. Thanks. Join our journey. Share this campaign with fellow retro enthusiasts and pledge now. Let's ensure that Old School Gamer magazine keeps the golden age of gaming alive and thriving. Man, you know what I was thinking well, when I was listening to Ryan's message? Some yeah. some other things that I would like to see. I would like to see Ryan or any contributors to the magazine discuss retro gaming products, old CRTs. Why the hell does it cost me $1,000 for a Trinitron? We already know why. But I want to see some six. Where's six at? Six, six owns a Sony Trinitron. I want six productions to do an article. I'm challenging six live. Y'all heard it. Six, I want you to talk about why a Tony <laughs> Trinitron is the most coveted TV in the community. <laughs> is that shot topic commercial? Oh man. But you know, uh I, I want to see that six, by the way. I was talking to a good friend and um they were showing off a um it's a hardware peripheral. And you would, it's like a capture card, but this capture card can, in real time can change up the, uh, I got to get my terminology together, but the dynamics of the screen. So they can emulate like a perfect CRT. Like I got one for I, one I that. Yeah, yeah. It, it's wow. wild. It's something to uh, catch up on. But, you know, technology now, man, like we may not even need those old ones. <laughs> hey, but then you got the people like Six. Six gave me hell, man, because I sent him a picture of me playing with a send-in light gun. On a modern oh, TV. Oh, yeah, I remember he told, that. You know, he told me that there's only one way to play Duck Hunt, and playing on a 92 inch projector screen ain't it. So, <laughs> we got these elitists out here, gatekeeping <laughs> six productions, gatekeeping the retro communities, telling me that I'm not retro because <laughs> I'm playing on a projector and a standing light gun. You're not playing an Atari on a broken Atari stick, you ain't playing Atari. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. Hey, what y'all think about that, man? You got these purists out there, like like six. You know what y'all think about that? It are it, are you doing it a disservice if you're not playing it correctly? I, I'm curious on that. Yeah, it, it, it was something notable what he said at the end of that uh, YouTube. Uh, the golden age. 
you know, of gaming. You know, is that what people consider the golden age? Oh, that let's time talk about that, Mensa. Kick, kick that off, Mensa, because I got a comment on that. What do you? What's your thoughts on what is the golden age to you? Because I know Ryan's going to say in television, Coleco, right. that's not my nostalgia. I'm sorry. But right. And, you know, and that's that's the generational gap. So uh, I'm a Toys R Us kid, you know. <laughs> hey. <laughs> and and uh, it, it, for me, it was that transitional period. So I'm going to have to go to the Dreamcast there. Oh, mm. shit. <laughs> they they be mad at you, Prince. Um, um, <laughs> They're going to be upset with you. You said Dreamcast is golden there? <laughs> oh, shit. Chat. I'm, I'm that guy. I'm Put that it guy, in the guys. chat. I, I mean, I know, I know this is going to hurt people with, uh, you know, with back in the tech or the PlayStation 1 era, the, you know, Ooh, the 3D fighting. But I'm a Dreamcast, man. Prince, what do you think, man? So I, I would say it would be in between that wedge exiting out into from Atari where the gaming – uh, the gaming community was in a collapse uh, going into the NES and Sega Master System. I, th I, I would say that's the golden era to me. Okay, okay, so I'm 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 aligning with Prince Malcolm. I think that's my that's what I would consider golden era. You said what uh, Sega Master System, NES, SNES. Was that because it was like groundbreaking to you, or uh, yeah, for yeah for me yeah. groundbreaking. Um, because of the fact that, like, you had marquee games like a Robocop, um, Ooh, yeah. Ninja Ninja Turtles, uh, Superman for the NES, even though it wasn't that great. But it's those licensed titles that you couldn't get on an Atari. And then midway when you had it on Sega Master System, even though the system was um, plenty full, um, powerful than uh, the NES, yes. the NES was just the wave maker. But see, for, for me, for the uh, the Dreamcast, it had the the four uh, ports for the controllers. Mm. Uh, you got the golden standard, the CD. You had a dedicated online system from the company it, or itself, like AOL Online. It was the, it was the Sega stuff. Mm -hmm. You Sega had a, you had a modem for it. You had a mouse. You had a keyboard. You could access the browser, the internet. It had a microphone. It, uh, it was um, this fish game, and you could talk to it and with the AI and stuff. It, it was wild stuff. Uh, the controllers were revolutionary for me. It had a LCD screen that you could remove, wow. yeah. and then you could play Tamaguchi on it, and then you could re-download it back to the game for That's Sonic. Cool. Like, yeah. it's just too much going on. For me, That 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 nothing could touch it. So that says a lot about Mensa. You know what I just learned about Mensa just now? He's a technical guy. So Mensa cared less about anything else, but he looked at what? What did you hear in his message just now? He looked at the tech specs. Hey, I got four ports. Hey, they got a VGA in the controller. Hey, it's got Sega Channel online service. It connected me to the world because yeah. I, I, didn't a, I didn't have a I didn't have a a crazy um, personal computer. So by getting on, I was able to go, uh, go on IRC, you know, oh, and, and, and talk to my friends, That's crazy. you know, like it, without the Dreamcast, I was stuck in a hole, huh. garden nukes without, you know, so, <laughs> so now, so Mensa brought up a good point. Um, he said that the Dreamcast made him open to the world, yeah. whereas somebody who was playing computer games. They may not feel that way. They may already, they were already open to the world, right? So right. they may not think. So that's why I love these different perspectives. And that's what makes the magazine great. I don't feel. Canada Phil, let me touch on Canada. <laughs> Canada <laughs> Phil said he want he don't want to hear from nobody under 45. Come on, Canada. <laughs> he said 45 and up, he wants their perspective. Um, and he's saying, what did he say? Uh ColecoVision? What? <laughs> What did he say? Golden era, golden age that truly blew his mind was PS1. Oof. For the Commodore 64, you got to be 64. <laughs> oh, hey, you know what? Look, Glenn, you know who talks about those? Glenn. Glenn Planamento, he don't talk about shit else, but that era, and that's fine, but because he's a Gen Xer, he said it. So he's like, right hey, here, man. What this man said, Steven's coming. How powerful the system. 
Mm -hmm. Pop open that 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 Sonic game and tell me I that agree. doesn't compete. I agree. I agree. Still today, what was made? I agree. Well, that's not two K. Smooth. NFL 2K1 looks better than Madden right yes, now. It's the VMUs. It's so crazy you mentioned about the Dreamcast because a lot of people saying, well, where's our Dreamcast mini? mini? And like they're it's saying, well, it's VMU. hard to emulate and get that thing together. So you know how cool this VMU was? I would play virtual tennis and I was so cocky. I turned my back. And the reason is, is because you could play Pong on it. And that was the map of the ball. So I would turn around and play Pong and beat people on the screen playing virtual tennis. Ooh, that's funny. <laughs> and then when you played uh, the football games, you could, you picked your plays on uh, the VMU. So people couldn't cheat and know what you were, you were about to do. That's what I liked about it. the whole the game a whole other level. Because that's what that's, that was the crutch, Mensa, in Tecmo Bowl. I would look at my brother's screen because <laughs> I'm looking at his side. He, oh, he about to run with Bo Jackson. Or, oh, he about to throw to this Ronnie uh, uh, Jerry Rice. So I knew what play he was picking. It was going to be up and then A. Down, <laughs> B, uh, right, A. And so I already knew the plays. But yeah. like you said. These things are revolutionary right here. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, NBA and and, 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 and you know what was so nice about 2K? And, and all, all the 2K <laughs> series. Is the fact that they competed with the Maddens. Yep. They would sell for 20 bucks and they were arguably better. Way better. Than what Madden was putting out and those other games were putting out. I agree. And Mensa, mm -hmm. 2K used ESPN uh coverage. So they would they would announce the game as if you're watching it on ESPN. Yes. That was yes. that was groundbreaking. Not knocking Madden, but hey, what's up, Steps Gaming? Hello. What we got here? SNES. Uh oh. PS1. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Said, I'm not. I'm not yeah. disagreeing so far. Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, oh, okay. PC Master Race. I was PC with that, it's, it's but PC the Switch needs to go higher. <laughs> yeah. And he, yeah. But you know what though? Uh, the Wii. The Wii. Yeah. yeah you know. The, the, it, the it's still good. <laughs> Hey, Mensa got me getting the Wii. I, dude, I forgot about the Wii until this dude sent me a video. I went and pulled my damn Wii out and trying to mod the shit now. So, I, I mean, hey. My son. Kids love it. Kids my love son it. plays on it now. It's his favorite uh, system uh -oh. right now. Tech Buzz said <laughs> Xbox trash. Oof. You're going to get some people up in here. Now, I, I do agree I like PlayStation. I've always been a Sony fanboy. I'll admit that. Um, I did own Xbox though. I had the OG, still got it, uh, and it was good. But I like Sony. I, I mean, just being real, mm -hmm. I like Sony better. Yeah, yeah. We is retro now. What the hell? She she's right though. <laughs> she's right. Yeah, but you know, but here's the deal: the Wii redefined gaming again because the Wii basically made it like the old era when the old era was. Your parents would play the Nintendo with you because things were Bingo. simple and basic, and that's what the Wii did. I remember there was this older couple. They came in, and they and the person said they mentioned their grandson or something like that. And they're like, "Oh, you're gonna uh, buy this for your grandson?" And they're like, "No, we're gonna buy it for ourselves." Mm. <laughs> I remember doing physical therapy in the service, and guess what they had in the uh, there? They had the Wii U Sports, the Wii U Fitness. Like we for fit. the physical therapy, so we fitness yeah. with the with the little board that you can step. Yes, because they had the weight board, yeah. and they'll tell you ain't you doing your push ups right. That thing <laughs> was <laughs> it's no they joke. Used the Wii sure. That thing, the it, that thing did work. Yeah, it worked great. It. And I'll tell you what, Nintendo always had a groundbreaking peripheral. Think about the uh, it's so cool the Power Glove. Then you had the trackpad. You had the Nintendo satellite, they called it, where you had a multi-tap. I mean, Nintendo been innovating. I, I, yeah. There's no argument there. Don't forget yeah. the gyromite, uh, the robot. Yeah, the gyromite. Oh, I, how could I forget that? Mm -hmm. Duck Hunt, the zapper. I mean, who was first? I want to know, where's my gaming historians at? Six. Was Super Scope 6. Oh. oh. Super Scope mm -hmm. 6. That game was hard, too. <laughs> who was the first to have a light zapper? on the console was it nintendo i know sega had the no. phaser well i mean um sega had to, to find that what would you consider a light zapper though 
Well, a light gun. So, well, I guess. It I would- mean, because there was things that it like did it like that. Because I remember there was one where it would like play like a pre-recorded thing. Oh, and you get to shoot at it, and then it took a uh, VCR thing, right? Wasn't it? Yeah, a- yeah. Hmm. And it would take the score, and because I, I remember it was like a a playing game or something like that, and you would shoot. So Phil uh, said it was and keep the score at the end. Is that is that right? That the light phaser was first. I didn't know that. I missed this one. So he said the Sega light phaser was first. Huh. Didn't know, but the game sucked on the light games on Master System were terrible. It ain't hold a candle to Duck Hunt or <laughs> the Wii's were dangerous. But you know, if you did that, you were ignorant because you used the straps. You by the time hey, use that in the in the plan. It was it's like the VR now where people are running into stuff. It's like, come on, folks. <laughs> So wait, Canada Phil educating. He said in the late seventies, Pong combo games had light guns. Oh, okay. Well, I'll stand corrected. I'll stand corrected. It was between the NES and the Master. See, I never mess with the Master System. I never mess with Matt. Who? So who in here on the panel and in the chat had a Master System? I never owned a Master System. No. Who in Me. here had a Master? <laughs> I never <laughs> had a damn Master System. I don't I've know even rip one. I've seen one. I, I've never owned one. Uh, My I, cousin I, had it, but I didn't like it over the Nintendo. Hell no. Nah. And I think after the Sega Master, I, I think She Lion brought it up. Was it the Mark III? It was a smaller console. Oh, the Mark, yeah. After they, I guess, Sega merged with Tonka for whatever weird reason. Oh, my God. That was it. <laughs> Okay. Phil said the Telestar. I I remember seeing a Telestar. I never owned that. That was a little bit before me, uh, Phil. Sorry. <laughs> I see. I know what you're talking about, though. But uh, yeah, Sega did have the 3D glasses, but Nintendo did too, guys. Trivia: What game used the 3D glasses? Come on, Mister Prince. You don't I don't know, know about that. One. I know about the VR system. The virtual Boy. I had the Virtual Boy. Oh, there was an NES game. And y'all know this game. It okay. used 3D glasses. Hogan's Alley? No, nope, it was Rad Racer. Oh, yes. I right. remember That's right. now. <laughs> That's right. Wow. It glasses and then it looked, it was 3D. I forgot about that. So, right. Oh, so Paul, Paul, you worked at Toys R Us in the mid. The Neo Geo was the one we had, but no. Hey, because it was a thousand, it was equivalent to a thousand dollars back then. I don't know anybody that had a Neo Geo. That's one of those Montgomery Ward Christmas catalog things. <laughs> Hard I remember get. seeing the uh, Neo Geo and like an EB Games way back kind of thing. And hell no, nah. that was it was ridiculous, man. Games was what three hundred dollars a piece just for a fucking yeah. I mean, because if you do inflation, you're looking at today. Those games were you know five hundred to six hundred dollars. JLS, you got a completing box what? Don't say Neo Geo. But you know what's funny? People are complaining about the cost of the systems and the games. But if you think about it, they're either staying on par or they've gotten cheaper. If mm. you do the inflation differences. Oh, the no. Nintendo was way more expensive than the PlayStation 3. The Lynx was garbage. <laughs> I agree with Paul. Paul, see, Paul's a Toys R Us employee. So, Paul, talk, speak on it. What sold? What was selling yeah. in the mid-90s? What what? what we know Game Boy. I'm a guess. Game Boy, NES, SES, <laughs> Sega. Anything else? Game Gear. I mean, you know, it, it's cute and all that the Atari, like these systems came out, but I still don't. I, I mean, I don't have nothing to say other than my own thoughts. But I still say the Nintendo still crushed them well. Be- Nintendo lasted well beyond its years. Yeah. Oh, it's still right now. My kid, you know, right now likes like, it. <laughs> yeah. And my it's so- kid right now likes it. And I think Bonk's Adventure did better on the NES than it did on the Turbo Graphic. Right. Way better. Oh, look. So Paul said Genesis Game Boy, Super Mario 3 was out the wazoo. Hey, I can see Super Mario. That was the best Mario. Well, Mario. well but but why? Do we remember why though? It the, got shark on that movie. The movie, Blizzard. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. That was a nobody freak. knew about that nobody secret knew. until they watched that bloody movie. You gotta watch the movie. <laughs> Hey, and I went to the movie theater to see that shit, and everybody's like, "Ooh!" But they didn't have the game because the game. I don't. I don't remember if the game was. I didn't have the game when I saw Wizard. So I don't, I don't, it wasn't out. It was the first time that a game was being like demoed like yeah. that. 
I, so you know, everybody went and got that damn game. I know yeah, I was after the fact, right? Because it wasn't out yet. Lit. So it it was it was basically a Nintendo commercial. <laughs> it was an expensive ass commercial. Nintendo was smart, and it played out. It's so crazy because I think during that year was that 1990. What what year was that? 89 or 90. 89, 89 I think. Because it, it, it was very early because Fred Sa it was Fred Savage in the movie. Yeah, he was still on Wonder. Yeah, and he was still a little kid. So yeah, and I was like his age. So yeah, you man. had Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Batman, Ghostbusters two, that movie, and then after that that year, um, in 1990, uh, it was what Mega Man three. When did Robocop drop? Uh, that was late eighties. Like late eighties, right? The late eighties. The late '80s, the Nintendo games killed whatever was on Sega. Yeah. Yes. Oh, hey, Paul, mm -hmm. I I agree with the EA Sports games. I got a bunch of those still, and they had so many EA Sports games. They had the Madden, the NHL, the uh, NBA Live '95. They had uh, baseball. They had so many damn games for EA. But, Sports. but for me, EA only took over because. The 2K series were no longer able to oh, hold on to the NFL license. Otherwise, how can you beat twenty dollars versus sixty dollars and they're still beating out beating the quality? I'll take that twenty dollars. <laughs> I agree. So to die for said somebody in high school that he knew had a TG16 and came and brought it to his house after school. Ooh. Man, I didn't know anybody with a TG16. I did. I you did? really rich. I rich. Was, shit, I was. Excuse me. I was in the fifth grade, and the guy bought those little cards, I guess, for the, the flash cards. Yeah. yeah, the flat, whatever you call them, is whatever. Yeah, I got lucky, uh, Phil. I was able to go to um, Toys R Us like before they open, kind of thing, and get one. Because you know that was another thing. People didn't really mess with Toys R Us when it came to getting the items first. They would go to the mall. They would go to the mall or or, or something like that, or to the game They stuff. didn't. They didn't think about going to the Toys R Us. Yeah. Not where I was at. They was lined up at Babbage's. Uh, mm -hmm. What was the other one? Uh, EB Games. Heck, even Walmart. EB Toys. <laughs> Walmart. 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 Funko Land. Service merchandise. Yeah, Funko Land. Y'all remember service merchandise? Did y'all yeah. have that out there? Surface, no. hey, I, I, I got one for you, uh, Circus City. Oh, hell yeah, Circus City, man. Oh, man. Montgomery Ward, Montgomery Ward. Hey, did you back. guys have a store called Best? No, mm -hmm. it was like an appliance, it's almost like Circuit City. No, nah, we had cons, cons. Um, Caldor, nope. Mm -mm. Wow. Prince, Prince, where were you? He bringing up DC ah. stuff. DC stuff. He's a local. Wait, 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 what about Zares? Yeah. Yeah, I heard of Zares. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I heard of it. Steph yeah, said yeah. Her, her grandma worked. So here's the thing. Steph's brought up wards. My dad you worked there. Remember when those department stores dropped their own consoles? Like Sears had a version of, of 2600. Oh. It, it was Sears branded, but it played 2600 games. I think Montgomery Ward had some version of, of a game. I, I got game a game boy and a game boy games and guess how i end up earning them how oh. kool-aid points oh i remember the kool-aid points oh, oh my god kool-aid used to have a magazine it hey a catalog. it was more than just a magazine it was a catalog, catalog. like game thick like a sears catalog and then yeah. they would have like a mound of kool-aid in the store mm -hmm. and you would walk up to the catalog hey let me tell you something so my mom I got all my birthday presents once from Kool-Aid Points. I got a five-speed bicycle. Like, it was cool, too. Like, you push it in like a controller and you change the speed. I got a bicycle. I got a remote control car. And it won't one of those cheap ones that you always get where they can only reverse. Right. Or, or which way. Like, I got that. I got a Game Boy and a Game Boy game. And it was no joke. She had them leaf size garbage bags. Dump them in the middle of the floor. Because everybody out of work contributed for like That's a whole hilarious. year. And it worked, man. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> That's hilarious, man. Yeah. Bring it Kool Aid points, man. JLS say Circus City. Uh, so I saw somebody, fellas, in the chat bring up the Sega Nomad. Now, I remember the Sega Nomad because it played uh, cartridge, uh, actual cartridges, it was a portable. 
that was the first time I seen something like that. So yeah, Sega did pioneer on on that one because oh, you can play with Genesis. Bradley's. Oh man, oh, Bradley. Yeah, I, I'm. I know Bradley's. Yeah, yes. I know Bradley. So Tech, you got a Nomad? I, I, man, that would be a good one to pick up. He said he loves his Nomad. I still got my Game Gear though that took thirty batteries. Shit, man. Hey, quick question because I, I remember um, a while ago Sega. Also, or on the Genesis side, they had a light gun too. Was that also called the Nomad? It kind of looked like a um an a with a scope gun. on it. Hmm? I don't remember that one. Haywood hmm. might. I don't remember a Genesis light gun. Uh, that one's a good question. I don't think Genesis had a light gun. Yeah, man, it was I'm like Google I, this. My yeah, Google. Google. it was it was ah oh, man, they had a light gun. Huh. Uh, he, Konami was it like a um a six shooter? Lethal Enforcer stuff? Oh man, I I can't remember. All I know it was it was all black, and it, I think it started with an M. But I, I see it, the Minister. Yes, yes. I don't think I ever seen the Minister. Yeah. Pull that up. Pull yeah, pull yeah. That up. The only reason why I remember that is because of a cookie crisp cereal box that was giving that away. I never seen this shit. Yep. I never knew about this. What the hell? Who who in the chat used a minister? I've never seen. What it's game? clean too. It's, clean. it's nice, but what game was this for? I I don't know. I just knew that it exists. <laughs> oh shit! Somebody said T two. The arcade T two, I have that game still. Wait for Sega. I don't remember using a damn gun for it. He said Genesis did have a light gun. It had a T. It had the T two cart. No wires. What? That motherfucker is nice. Hey, that put the scope. (laughs) That thing like a little mini AK. Yeah. See. Oh, oh, uh, Blaze said T2 and Lethal Enforcers too. Oh, right. <laughs> Here, here's something good though, like this is the kind it? of stuff. Like we're talking about games, why not accessories? You know, retro. Let's talk about retro accessories. That's a good idea, mm-hmm. Miss. I need this. How much is it? Thirty bucks. Uh, one was like thirty, forty. That's so one didn't work at all, and then this one without a receiver or. Oh, anymore. okay. But the other one looked like receiver. See, this one says like untested. This one says, uh, this one's a Sega Master one. This one's clean. That's the light phaser. I remember that. I remember that one. So, wait a minute, guys. So, the Sega Mini, right? Now, if you were to get that adapter, because there's certain controllers you could plug up to the Sega Mini, and when you hack into it, can you use that menacer with that Mini? Bobby Vu? (laughs) That's a a Vu question. Bobby Vu? Or Phil? So he said, Paul said he sold a lot more of the Super Scopes. Yeah, I've never seen a minister. Mm-hmm. I've seen a damn Super Scope, 100 million. Zaire, look, yeah, look that up. I've never seen that either. Oh, Zaire's. That's oh, Zaire. Zaire. Oh, that's, that's the one you mentioned earlier. Yep. Y'all remember Finger Hut? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Spiegel. Remember Spiegel, uh, the Spiegel catalog? <laughs> yes. Yep. My mom used to order out of that shit. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna have to ruin the fun. Uh, we're about that time. Well, we appreciate everybody yes, joining put a us. Finger up. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, while you guys talk, I'm gonna go ahead and pull up this uh, stuff to get this um, giveaway going. No All right, so to wrap things up, we got the church finger, we got our, our pastor's coat tail pulled. <laughs> uh, everybody. Please go out and support Ryan. Let's get him to 20000 You know, all jokes aside, he's at 18. He needed a couple grand left. He's got four days. I believe we all put our ducats together, our cheese, our moolah. We'll get him to 20000 and we'll keep the magazine open. And I want to see people feature. I want to see a she-line feature about our, uh, full-size arcades. Canada Phil, I want you talking about these uh, pre- what you said, you want to, Coleco Vision? <laughs> I want to see you talk about some stuff in there. Six, you already know you submitting an article about that Sony Trinitron. I want to know why that thing is important. Please get out, put your money together. 
Even if you got 15 bucks, throw it out there. Support this man. Let's get him. He's a school teacher. He's a person of the community. Let's get him over to the 20,000. Yep. Any last words, fellas? Again, for you independent de developers out there on Twitter, like, look, this is a golden opportunity for you to make your game the most popular game within the next couple of years. 2024 is coming up. Um, there's going to be a lot of new things coming out for Nintendo. would love to see your game on the new Nintendo Switch that's coming out or the PlayStations. And you could do that by joining or subscribing to Old School Gamer Magazine. It's yeah. worth it's worth it. The networking, the connections you make, the friendships, the live broadcast that is here for the magazine. So yeah. just reach out, donate right now, support the Kickstarter. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Minster. Yeah, that's what's up, man. Prince, Prince home, said it best. I, I can't follow up to that. <laughs> I'm about to say, man, who? I, there ain't no one up in that. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's just go. And <laughs> get the All right, guys. So uh, this is going to be for a, from what I believe, a PS5 uh, Madden 2024. Thank you to JLS Gaming. Shout out to JLS Gaming. Give, Game. Giveaway. Uh, Right here. So Man, whoever funny. wins this, hit me up some way, somehow. I'm on Facebook, here, whatever. Give me your details so we can get this going and give it out. I'm going to click this button here. So it's going to be off the cuff, all lowercase, hashtag oh, off the, the cuff. cuff. Uh, that's, in, be, that's our show. That's our brand. That's our motto, off the cuff. And um, it's a way of life. Button. Off the cuff is a way of life. That's how I live, baby. Exactly. So let's yeah, go ahead and get it cuff. in, chat, off the cuff. Shout out to JLS Gaming for Thank sponsoring this. Appreciate you. Hey, can I, JLS, can I put my name in the hand? <laughs> I don't have Madden 24 yet. So hopefully hey, hey, off the cuff. Come in. on, put it in, y'all. Off the right, cuff. We got one entry only. I mean, I guess it's going to be an easy win for somebody. Uh -oh. Hashtag <laughs> off the cuff. I'm about to put in two. I'm about to see <laughs> Hey, y'all playing. You're going to have competition. Y'all back. Watch this. Here we go. Y'all play it. <laughs> Hold on. We got four entries. We got 11 people watching. I, I don't know if y'all just don't want to give yourself the way or not, but swallow your pride. You know you want this game. Folks, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Come on in. Give it a couple of minutes. <laughs> we got six. Hey, come on in, Madden. Hey, and, and look, <laughs> hell, what's happening in? Brand new seal, <laughs> seal. I win. <laughs> All right, we go. Hey, we got missing. What we got? Two more, two more seconds. Yeah, we got. Uh, I'm gonna give it about eight more seconds, and I'm gonna right. click this. We got seven inches in, eight people. Yeah, yeah. Damn, Phil, I just saw you comment. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. All right, time is up. Oh, oh, uh, go ahead right. and see who wins. Draw. Let's go. No. Go. <laughs> Prince Malcolm, no, come on. <laughs> oh, big oh, reach. Oh. <laughs> big reach. <laughs> international <laughs> shipping. International it never so are only USA contestants. <laughs> USA contestants only. Now nah, we play it. Uh, hey, congrats, man. You, you got my details. <laughs> <laughs> you got my details in me up. <laughs> oh man, big risk. <laughs> hey, you say yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey. No, nah, we teasing, man. <laughs> no, you're good, man. You're good, dude. <laughs> I'm gonna make sure this comes out to you. Six, you will date. Come on, six. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> now everybody's coming. Right, everybody it, it just coming. jumped up by double. We went from nine. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, guys. Oh man. All right. It's hey, it's home, I want to thank everybody for joining us. <laughs> you want to close it out, buddy? Hey, support the Kickstarter. I'm about to pull out my wallet. I'm challenging everybody. Don't matter the level because we ain't judgmental because every dollar and every cent counts. Support it. All right. Maybe Anything? next time you could win this too. Oh, look at this. Oh, uh, ooh, oh classic. Run that oh, here. Hey. 
Yeah, orange. My here. favorite flavor. Purple. <laughs> Purple. <laughs> All right, guys. Yeah, no, yeah, no, no. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. All right. Peace. Peace. Peace.